Yo, what's good, YouTube? This is Jay from TNJ. And we're going to start this video out. There's going to be a lot of content in this video. You don't want to miss any of it. But we're going to start this video out with some good news. So we came out of All-Star break going 5-1, and one, including winning this game at Tampa Bay. Look at this. Real Muto went 5-for-5 five five in this game. Had five hits, and you know what? He didn't even have many RBIs, but look at Brian Anderson down there doing work in the last spot in the lineup, going three for five, so two for five, actually. So it's good to see him going, but he's still only hitting 213. And one guy you notice that's not hitting too well up to this point, Aquino. He's hitting 197, so he's definitely dipped off quite a bit. But Lieri Garcia, quietly the story of this year. We acquired him from the White Sox. He goes four for five in this game, hitting 299 on the year. He's doing great. Then we move on to another series, which we won two out of two games versus the Braves in a two game series. Then we went up against Washington and look at this game. Santana went four for four, three ribbies in this one. He's hitting 319 now. And look at Justin Bull right behind him hitting 317 so man our three four hitters are just showing out this year and one guy that i am actually so impressed by is giovatella two for four in this game scoring two runs so he's getting it done at the top of our lineup and aquino gets over 200 uh over the next stretch of games but look at Leary garcia up to 300 on the season and in this game i mean I mean, okay pitching. Despagne is actually doing really good. Two earned runs, six strikeouts over five innings. That's exactly what I've been looking for from him. So then looking at the month of July, we did go 5-1 and one after the All-Star break, but then we lost the next three versus Washington, and then we won the next one at Atlanta. So we are at the trade deadline right now, but let's look at the standings really quick. So if you look at our standings, we are actually 52-56, and 56, four games below 500, way behind in the division. I mean, we're definitely not even competing, probably for the next two years for the division. But look at this, man. We are only three and a half games out of the wild card so our offense is just absolutely carrying us to victories and, and some spotty pitching actually i mean we're not doing too bad with our pitching let's just look at the stat statistics here let's look at our team rankings here so if we look at batting average we're actually ninth in the mlb in batting average led by domingo santana look what he's hitting right now 332 he's hitting Let's just confirm that really quick. Let's just go to rosters. Let's go to all players. Let's just look at him. So he is hitting 332. He is having a breakout season, 25 home runs, and he is just killing for us. And if we just look at, maybe he might may be in the running for awards, and look, he is. So for the NL MVP, he is third right now. And that is just a great story for a guy that, you know, got traded during this season and he's definitely picked up his play third in the uh, All-Star, I mean, third in the MVP. But look at this rookie of the year. Aquino is actually third. He's hitting 195 and he's third. I mean, how is that even possible? I don't, I don't even know. Uh, we're going to get into some more craziness in this episode, but look at the gold glove at first base. Justin Bohr doesn't even have good fielding attributes, but he's actually number one in the gold glove right now. His fielding percentage is pretty high. So if we keep going down the line, look at Starling Castro. He's high for the golden glove at second base. Keep going down the line. Martin Prado's even in second and at third base. But that's pretty good. I mean, it's good to see a lot of these guys doing their thing in the silver slugger in the outfield. Definitely Domingo Santana is in the lead for sure. But that's kind of crazy to see. But I wanted to show you guys a couple of things. We're going to get into some trade deadline talk and some acquisitions that have happened. Let's just jump into the acquisitions. So uh, first, looking at you know some some of the call-ups some of the big call-ups i want to look at the top prospects right now so ronald acuna actually got called up 
to the MLB. He just got called up nine games ago. He's hitting 242. Let's just look to see if there's some other guys. Aloy Jimenez gets called up as well, and he is a dangerous hitter. I didn't even realize how good he was until I actually looked at his ratings. But he has 74 power verse left. He is a straight beast. He gets called up. Let's see if there's any more of the top 50 prospects that have been called up during the season. And I don't think there are any. So uh, only two in the top 50. So let's look at some of the transactions that have happened in the last two weeks. So, you know, some of these deals are just head scratching. So remember early in the year, look at the top trade. Trevor Story gets traded from the Rangers but he goes straight back to the Rockies. It Bruh. makes no sense at all. They literally traded him. Let's just scroll down to that trade. They literally traded him earlier in the season for Joey Gallo. Let's let's just keep going down the line here. Avisel Garcia finally gets his wishes. He gets traded to the Twins. The Twins give up uh, Maeja, Maeja, I don't know how to say that, and Jake Reed. So they make a pretty good big trade there. But look at the Indians. This was a big trade. Austin Meadows, the top prospect with the Pirates and as far as uh, fielders go, he's a center fielder. He's actually pretty solid. He gets traded for one of the top prospects in the uh, Cleveland Indians organization, Tristan McKenzie. And Tristan McKenzie was a guy I was actually trying to trade for. And he's really good. I mean, if we keep going on the line, look at these trades, though. The Phillies, George Springer. I mean, George Springer gets traded to the Phillies for Reese Hopkins. And Abdubal Herrera, I mean, that is a huge, huge trade. I mean, I cannot, like, let's just look at how good these players are. Because if Houston, let's just see what Houston got back in return. So, they got Herrera. Let's look at Herrera really quick. So, he's not even in. So, Reese Hopkins is 25 years old. He's a potential. He His hitting zones, I mean, are amazing. All red. But where is Herrera? I don't even see him. So, here he is. He's center fielder. He's 77 overall. He's C potential. I mean, but they trade away George Springer. I mean, it just doesn't make sense at all. I mean, to be honest with you, I mean, they probably got stronger at left field, no doubt. Uh, they probably, I don't know what they're doing here in the outfield because either they're thinking about trading Josh Reddick or is he moving on with his contract? No, he's locked up for the next three years. So he's going to be there for a while. It's Mariznick up, so he's due for arbitration. But then they got Abdul Herrera, so I don't know what they're doing here. They got four outfielders, which they you do need four outfielders. But why trade one? Of, I mean, the best one of the best players in the MLB right now in George Springer. I mean, it just doesn't make sense. I mean, they already had their center fielder of the future, but he is locked up for the next two years. So I guess I mean he's hitting 310. I mean he's hitting great. I mean, are they struggling? Let's just look at. The standings, I mean, are they struggling right now? I mean, they must not be because if they're making trades, so they're actually in first place by about seven games, and they looks like they might have the best record in the AL. So, no, the Yankees do. So, the Yankees actually are 69-37, and 37, so they're doing pretty well. But, yeah, I mean, that's just a crazy trade. Let's see if there are any more crazy trades that have happened. Uh, if we keep going down here, George Springer, so... Uh, Nick Castellanos gets traded to the Yankees. That's actually a pretty good move by the Yankees. Um, and then they acquire Hunter Pence. So I don't know if they're just, I think they're just all in for the season. They're making a lot of moves. And it doesn't look like any other big trades have happened. Oh, I mean, look at this one. Tim Beckham co goes to the Yankees for Greg Birds. That's actually a big one. Let's just look at the Yankees now. Let's look at their roster because... They've made quite a few moves here. So let's look at Tim Beckham. Tim, Tim Beckham's actually pretty decent. If you look at him, he's only 28 years old, which isn't young as far, I mean, old as far as baseball years. He's 28. And I mean, he's pretty good. 79, 79 overall. Uh, he's hitting 258, which could be better, but I mean, it's okay. Um, not too bad. I mean, they definitely needed a third base upgrade over Drury. But you know what? I actually like Drury. I mean, look at his hitting zones. And he plays every position. He's actually a decent MLB player. I mean, he's only 70 overall, but I wonder why. His, his more, okay, that's why. His morale is kind of down right now. I mean, because he looks like a pretty good player. And you know what? He might be a guy that we actually might go after. But let's hop into maybe a couple of trades that we might execute right now. So for the first trade, 
we are going to trade for some young future relief pitching and this guy Jordan Hicks is special he is actually the number seven prospect in the St. Louis Cardinals organization their farm system his ETA is actually 2019 so next year according to MLB.com but you know what I like about him is that his fastball is lively I mean it is just it zips he's got 83 velocity and I mean he's 21 years old with B potential 69 overall right now his strikeouts per nine is 73 and his hits per nine is 62 so we're actually giving away Martin Prado and we knew this day would come but you know when it came down to it a lot of teams didn't offer a lot for Martin Prado there were actually a lot of trades for him but they were giving up C potential prospects kind of lower kind of project guys but we found a trade that actually worked. Jordan Hicks, a relief pitcher, and with a throw-in relief pitcher, Tyler Lyons. So Tyler Lyons is actually, we necessarily don't have to keep him on the books next year. He is going into his arbitration year, but 78 overall, and he's actually 30 years old. So he's an older guy, but you know what? He's going to give a boost to our pen right now. If you look at our bullpen, I mean... Tony Zich and Sean Burnett are our top relievers and look at this I mean he's already better I think he might be better than uh, Sean Burnett right now if you look at his strikeouts per nine 83 to 75 and his break is 99 we could use another left-hander in the pen so this is actually a good trade why because we build for the future with Jordan Hicks 21 years old B potential I mean he's gonna be a force I mean he just looks like he's gonna be really really good at 21 and then we end up giving up Martin Prado like I said there wasn't a lot of great offers I was getting for him getting for, uh, for him but the thing is I wanted to only trade him to a contender mainly because it's more realistic Martin Prado would probably only go to a contender and this looks like the best trade so let's execute this trade so it looks like they did accept it so another prospect swap here so mitchell white so he's actually rated according to mlb.com the number four prospect with the dodgers they want lewin diaz let's just look at their depth at first base they don't have any b potential guys here i mean pretty much they have nobody that's young and that they can build behind cody bellinger so this is actually a trade that they want to execute but let's look at this guy mitchell white if you looked at his ratings just now, you saw he has 99 velocity and 94 break. I mean, once he gets it together and he figures it out, he's going to be pretty much unhittable. I mean, I, I don't know who's going to touch him. I mean, pretty much unhittable. So I like this trade. He's 23 years old, so I, I, I can give him a couple years to develop. And who knows? He might develop a lot in one year uh, and maybe even, you know, compete for a spot 2020 because we're in 2018 he probably won't touch the majors next year but the year after that might be his year so i like this trade right now we're kind of getting another righty in our organization especially since we have two lefties we have the two lefties of braxton garrett and also uh trevor rogers so we have two lefties now we have a righty to build on along with sandy alcantara remember he's still on the on the uh, rise in our organization and then Dylan Peters is a guy that he's kind of went cold a little bit so maybe he's lost a little value but then we put another we put another B potential prospect in our organization at the starting pitcher position so I like this move so let's just make this deal and make it official so the final move we're making is a huge one so Brian Anderson is interesting I mean you know he's had kind of the year you're expecting from a first year player he's hitting in the low 220 200s hitting 220 only 10 home runs 33 rbis but you know he just hasn't shown me anything that tells me that he does one thing great what does he do great what is he going to be great at i i can't see that one thing he does have a potential and that means a lot he's going to be one day he might be end up being 90 overall but that might be next year that probably not next year but it might be three years down the road six years down the road we don't know but right now he's just not showing me anything and we already traded away our top third baseman in martin prado but look at the trade offer that this was actually offered to me so let's take a look at this taylor ward a 24 year old b potential catcher 
He's 71 overall right now. So if you compare that with our catchers, he's our backup catcher right now. I mean, he's that good. And if you look at him, he's got good good arm strength as a for a prospect. I want to say it's great. But he can actually hit the ball pretty well. His hitting zones are actually pretty red in certain areas. It's not all red, but it's it's pretty good, which lets me know that he's a good hitter. Right now, he's kind of on a cold streak, but that's all right. But the main guy I'm looking at right here is Jemai Jones. He is 70 overall right now. He's a second baseman. And look what other positions he can play. He can play the entire outfield. So if we needed him to be an outfielder, he could be an out outfielder. He's got 86 speed, 97 base running aggressiveness, which means he probably is going to be good on the base pass. And his stealing is something to be desired, but I we can fix that. I mean, that can improve. But if you look at everything else, I mean, he's a pretty good player. 74 vision, which, mean, which means he's probably going to be end up being a good hitter down the road. But he's 70 overall right now at 20 years old. Jemai Jones. I mean, this guy might end up being a beast. And then another high potential player. So these guys are all B potential. So we're getting three B potential players here for Blake uh, for Brian Anderson, look, look, I'm already forgetting his name. That's how far gone he is in my mind. Brian Anderson, Griffin Canning, and this is another pitching prospect we'll get. He's 66 overall, B potential, but he's 21 years old. So we are uh, we are getting three of their top 15 prospects, with Jemai Jones being the top prospect at number four in their organization. And let me just name the people who are ahead of Jemai Jones in their organization. Shohei Otani and Joe Adele and Kevin Mation. Let's look at Kevin Mation. So let's look at him. So he's actually 18. He's 63 overall. So I actually might think that Jemai Jones might be better right now or even down the in the future. I mean, he might be the number three prospect, like I said, behind uh, Shohei, wherever he is. So he's right here. He's probably tearing it up right now. So he's 8 and 4, 1, 4, 2 whip, 3, 8, 5 ERA. And then Joe Adele, who's a guy that I actually was trying to trade for, but he's 18 years old. He's got A potential. He is just an absolute beast right now. They won't even trade him for Brian Anderson straight up. But I like this trade, man. I mean, I'm trading a guy that I don't really have much faith in. He's 24 years old as well. So he's kind of he's moving into his prime, but I just haven't seen enough from him up to this point so i'm gonna make this trade man let's just execute this so it looks like they accept it so let's look to see where these guys are gonna slot into our organization because this is huge look at jamai jones he's our definitely our best infield prospect in our organization now and that's ahead of yu chang chang who actually made the all-star game so the jury's not out on yu chang chang too i mean he still can turn into something He's kind of cooled off hitting 233, but Jemai Jones, he's going to start at double A. I'm going to start him at uh, second base next to Hassan Diaz at shortstop. I like that combo at double A. And I mean, let's look at Taylor Ward. He's at double A as well. And I'm actually going to start him at double A as well. So, uh, and then our last prospect here, Griffin Caning, and he's actually doing pretty good at AAA. I mean, 138 whip, 418 ERA. The 418 ERA isn't that great, but I do like his strikeout to walk ratio. 136 to 45. That lets me know that he's actually pitching good ball. I mean, he's pitching pretty well on the mound. So that's going to be our organizational moves at the trade deadline. No big all-stars or anything get traded, but we let go of an A potential guy in uh and Brian Anderson but we do have a hole here we do need to address third base so uh, let's actually make a quick move to address that so while I was thinking about this Lewis Brinson's actually I moved him down to double-a look at how well he's doing he's hitting 378 he's actually on a hot streak so I actually want to move him up while he's got this hot streak because I want to see what he's got man and plus, my double A is over the limit right now. So moving him up is definitely going to be a move that I need to make. So let's just do this right now. Let's move him up to the MLB. So now he's back at the MLB on a hot streak coming from double A. And then one guy that I know I can play everywhere is Derek Dietrich. He's hitting 240. 
but he can definitely play third base and I think this is the move that I'm gonna make I'm gonna move him to third base and I'm gonna have to make a move in double-a to shore up the organization there but I like this move right now so that's gonna be our trade deadline man so we get a bunch of prospects in the process so I like what we did so hit subscribe hit that like button we'll be back for the next episode get back into some more gameplay so that's gonna be a good thing you'll get to see a new look lineup new look organization so let's get into that let's get it